Greetings, friends and brethren around the world. While praying to our Father in heaven, Jesus said in John 17, As you have sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your own name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. Jesus went on to say in verses 20 to 21, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Through their word. Let us stop right there, brethren. Let us stop and ask the question, Whose word is Jesus Christ talking about when he said, Through their word? My dear brethren, we know that it is the word of an apostle. It's an apostle's word that Jesus Christ was talking about. Verse 21, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. But ask another question. What unites us as one? Paul wrote about the household of God in Ephesians chapter 2, 19 to 20. And he said, Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Yes, Jesus Christ is the cornerstone, and the foundation has to be aligned with what he directs and reveals to an apostle. Notice what Jesus inspired Paul to write about what the household of God is built upon. What is the foundation, Paul said? He said, are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Those ministers under and ordained and ordained by an apostle were never given the responsibility to lay a foundation nor to build on Jesus Christ. They have to build on what the apostle laid. They have to be faithful stewards of revealed truth. But are they? The leaders of the Church of God, a worldwide association, said the following at the church's ministerial conference where 25, well, 215 ministers and their wives were present. Note this short video. We understand the spiritual origin of that foundation. We understand the connection between Jesus Christ and the church, and we understand the connection between ourselves and the church. We've gone through a culture at a period of time where church is unimportant, no matter what type of church you're talking about. We've gone through a period of time because of the problems and trials in the church, the church becomes sullied and sort of stained, and is it really what it was supposed to be? Well, no one is going to stand before you this next two days and pretend that we are what we are supposed to be. But we will assure you that we're striving to be what we're supposed to be. We're striving to be that church that Jesus Christ said would be built on him. I can only imagine the emotion as Christ looks at Peter and talks to him and he said, but it's here, Peter, that the church will be built. It's upon me. It's upon what I do. It's upon who I am that the church must be built. Therefore, there is a huge spiritual issue involved. It's as profound as the identifying the Messiah. It's profound as identifying the spiritual concepts that will shake the world. It's the foundation of the church. It's who we are, or it's who we're supposed to be, and who we must strive to be. The leader's message in that video, now we don't condemn anyone, but we show how far these churches of God have taken their ministry and their members away from the foundation laid by Herbert W. Armstrong. These men think they are being faithful stewards by saying they are building on Jesus Christ. You know, it all sounds so right. It all sounds so nicey nice. But they are confused because they have forgotten who laid the foundation in the 20th century. Let me repeat. They want to build their church on Christ. Now notice what Paul said to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians Chapter 4, verse 2. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. 
That faithfulness is explained by Paul in the following manner. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 3, verses 5 to 11. Who then isn't Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, yes, Paul planted the truth, Apollos watered. Apollos took what the truth Paul revealed, was revealed to Paul, and preached about it. But God gave the increase, Paul said. Remember, Jesus said none can come to him unless the Father draw them. Let us continue in verse 7. So then neither is he that plants anything, neither he that waters. But God gives the increase. That shows government from the top down. Verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building according to the grace of God which is given unto me, Paul said, as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation and another builds thereon. But let every man take heed how he builds thereon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid. What did Paul say? The truth which is Jesus Christ. They were unified, but Paul never said Apollos laid a foundation. He never said that. Apollos wasn't, and at that time, Apollos wasn't an apostle. The church of God, the superstructure, is built on the foundation which Paul had laid. You know, Paul laid that foundation, brethren. Ministers are not to build a foundation. They are to be wise stewards using the doctrines and the truth revealed by that apostle. Jesus used one man in the 20th century to lay a foundation for his spiritual temple and reveal to that one man truth. Christ will return only to that spiritual temple that is built upon the truth revealed to the 20th century apostle, to no one else. Jesus said in Matthew 7, verses 15 to 27, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but are inwardly, they are ravening wolves. Jesus is referring to preachers. Verse 16, You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns, of figs, of thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. We have to bring forth good fruit based upon the right foundation, brethren. Notice verse 21. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, and in your name have cast out demons, and in your name done many wonderful works? Yes, they say, we build on Christ. Notice verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Why is it iniquity? Because they want to do their own thing. They want to build as they please. Jesus continues, Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. The cornerstone, verse 25, and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. The stone that aligns the foundation which is laid by an apostle and the prophets, verse 26, and everyone that hears these sayings of mine and doesn't do them shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Brethren, these men leading churches of God are building on sand. The teachings of the ministry have to conform carefully to those teachings those doctrines that were taught. In 2 Timothy 1 verse 13, Hold fast the form of sound words which you have heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Timothy and evangelist heard them from an apostle, from Paul. 
Paul explained to Titus, possibly another evangelist, about what a man must be doing before he is ordained into the ministry. Notice what he said to Titus, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. These leaders refused to acknowledge by whom they were taught. No, rather they say, I'm of Christ. Let me repeat what the leader of the living church of God said about Herbert W. Armstrong in a sermon titled, The Elijah Question. And I quote Dr. Meredith. He was like a God, the Elijah to come. His writings are to be enshrined. Yes, Roderick Meredith He stepped off the foundation laid by an apostle and he went off to build his own living church of God. The foundation according to Paul in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20 is built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. It is their teachings. It is what was revealed to them and only them. Let us quickly turn to a prophet's writings in Jeremiah chapter 7 verses 22 to 28. For I spoke not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. God said, don't get involved in your own physical works. Verse 23, but this thing I commanded them saying, obey my voice and I will be your God and you shall be my people and walk you in all the ways that I have commanded you that it may be well with you. Now notice verse 24. But they listened not, nor inclined the ear, but walked in their own counsel and in the imagination of their evil heart and went backward and not forward. And this is exactly what's happened to the scattered churches of God. They have gone backward because of false shepherds. Verse 23, uh, 25. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. They refuse to hear the prophets, brethren, but they say, oh no, we build on the rock. Verse 26, yet they listen not unto me, nor incline the ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Therefore you shall speak all these words unto them, but they will not listen to you. You shall also call unto them, but they will not answer you. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeys not the voice of the eternal their God, nor receives correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. And what do they do instead of returning to the faith that was restored by the last apostle? These leaders form their own doctrinal committees. I quote from a COGWA website, their organizational structure. It states, in addition, and I quote, in addition to the administration, a five-member doctrine committee serves the church by reviewing material that will be published for doctrinal accuracy and resolving doctrinal questions. End of quote. Here we have, brethren, outright rebellion, refusing to heed what an apostle told them. And what did Mr. Armstrong say about these doctrinal committees? Let me quote him in a November the 8th, 1978 Pastor General's report. He said, Peter and Paul and the original apostles were also human and subject to mistakes. Yet the church received all its doctrines, teachings, and practices through those apostles. There is not one example of the church receiving its beliefs any other way. Jesus Christ did not appoint a doctrinal committee of men or ministers to manufacture and give the church doctrine. Jesus Christ taught Peter and the original twelve in person. The same Christ taught Paul in person. Christ is the personal word of God and the Bible is the same word in writing. Let's get this straight once and for all. The source of the beliefs teachings, customs, and practices in the church of God is God himself, not any man. Jesus said, I have spoken nothing of myself. The Father had instructed him. Jesus in turn taught his apostles in person. 
There was no doctrinal, doctrinal board. The teachings of the church did not come from a council of ministers and or lay members who voted on what they believe or voted on what to believe. And these leaders, brethren, refused to acknowledge what I just read to you. Mr. Armstrong went on to say in another PGR of June the 18th, 1979, God never yet has let one man through whom he started a great project turn wrong. And he has never yet let such an appointed leader of his die until his job was done. Finished. End of quote. God through Jeremiah the prophet asks in Jeremiah 8 verse 22, Is there no balm in Gil, Gilad? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? This scripture is referring to a sickness in the scattered churches of God. They are sick. Why? Because they refuse to build on the foundation laid by Herbert W. Armstrong. Build on what Jesus Christ revealed through him. They demean these books. They demean them. And they set up their own doctrinal committees contrary to what God has revealed. Balm was used to grow uh, in Israel for the healing of the nation. Israel's priests and, pro and prophets were like doctors bringing healing messages to the nation. Gilad was to Israel what Israel spiritually was to the world. The church of God is spiritual Israel. And if they continue to build on the foundation of Christ, if they continue to build on the foundation Christ laid through Herbert Armstrong, they would be unified in their effort to bring healing to a sick, sick world. But unfortunately, God says in Jeremiah 8 verse 9, the wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the eternal. And what wisdom is in them? Therefore will I give their wives unto others, and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For every one from the least, even unto the greatest, is given to covetousness. From the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone deals falsely. In our next series of videos, we will tell you, brethren, why Jesus Christ said, Don't let any man take your crown. So until next time, this is Michael Venish saying, goodbye brethren and goodbye friends.